I have just read a interesting book that is about names. And I suggest very strongly in life that if you're not happy with your name for whatever reason that you change it. There's a lot of reasons why the name given to you necessarily uh, by your family might not be your name. Uh, in some cases, oh my goodness, if I had a, this is an 800 odd page book and it goes deeply into names and why a name can control the very everything of your life, your destiny. It can control every aspect of your becoming whatever it was you were supposed to be and didn't make that happen. Names are critical, so critical, in fact, that if you feel that there is definitely another name you should have been called, you're probably right. That probably was the name you should have been called. But you got to live out your life with this other name that you are stuck with. Um, I am fascinated by this book. It, it genuinely is an eye-opener. Um, I Half the book is about what a name actually means. Um, so what, what he does is he takes the most sort of common uh, names, uh, the, yeah, probably oh, several hundred of the names, and he shows you the, the um, he shows you what happens when you take a certain name, what a certain name means, what it, it actually means is doing to you, the very nature of the sound of the name, what it's doing for you. Uh, I didn't even, you know, many times in my life, I've known that the words that we use, as we know in James, biblically, uh, the very words we use are either bringing life or death. The, the words that we are using are critical, uh, important, valuably important for who we are as people uh, and how we speak over other people. If we speak positive things over them, they're going to be nurtured. They're going to be cultivated. They're going to be cultured. They're going to grow into their destiny, right? So it's so important to be speaking prophetic words over people. Um, a while ago, I sent you a link to a video where one of the people talking on this uh, interview was talking about the most important, one of the most important aspects of powerful prayer is prophecy, is prophetic, prophetic words. And um, since that day, you know, uh, all those months ago, I have been tapping into that prophetic um, well, that wellspring of prophecy, that wellspring of prophetic utterances, and I find that it is absolutely incredible. In fact, um, over time, people will call me, sometimes from India, selling me solar or shares on a new company or whatever, and I utilize my prophetic discernment, my prophetic beliefs to um, tell them who they are and where they're going and, and what they're all about right now. And some of the things that are coming into their life. And they are blown away. I don't know these people. I've never met them. It's purely just from the sound of their voice and from their name that I'm actually discerning what I get through the Holy Spirit. And I'm always, always, always accurate. It's very rare to be told uh, something like that um, hasn't happened yet. Or even though I may have said it happened. I had a lady who I spoke to telephonically. Uh, from India. I've never met her. Um, no, she wasn't from India. I apologize. She was actually from Sri Lanka. And she was selling me shares, some kind of a share. And the funniest thing was she sounded Indian, but I knew, or Sri Lankan, but I knew that she wasn't. Something told me she's from Switzerland, from Geneva of all places. And I said to her, you know, you sound like you're from Sri Lanka, but you're either going to Switzerland or you've lived in Switzerland. And she was like, that is exactly right. She goes, I am actually Swiss. Um, it's just that I've been so many years. I have lived for so many years in, um, in this country that I've started to sound like, uh, like everybody here. Um, so I, I, 
I was blown away that that piece of information had been given to me at that very specific moment when it all mattered, where it all mattered. This book is amazing. I, I, I don't know how to say this. You know, it's really worth reading. Um, you probably are not going to, I don't know where I got it. It must have been at a book sale somewhere, uh, you know, at somebody's house or something. I'm not quite sure how I got it because the, the truth is it's not one of those books you would probably get very easily. But I'm sure you'll find it. I'm sure if you, you really look for it, you will find it. Yeah, this book has a variety of reasons why people get names. And uh, not a variety of reasons. There's like eight or nine pages in the index related to all the reasons why people give names. You know, sometimes people give people names that relate to um, financial orientation. You know, names that are biblical names, names that are Christ names, names that are ashram names, you know, cut out names, career names. Um, body part names, believe it or not, uh, be an Englishman names or be an English woman names, you know, be exotic names, sexual attraction names, being cheerful names, compensatory names, athletic names, names that show challenges in somebody's life, you know, uh, a nurture name, names that related to families. Um, and then, and then there's all these unbelievable things, you know, that relate to why people get those names, you know, nursery rhyme name, why somebody would get a, a pa, passed down from pa name, or save the marriage names, you know, um, moms and dads give kids names that relate to their circumstances at the time, but it may not be a name that, um, that actually suits you, that's going to help you with your life, Right. You know, humans are not plants. They're not things, you know. Shakespeare wrote, what's in a name? Well, that which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet, right? Uh, humans aren't flowers. You know, we're, we're not roses. Uh, a rose knows not its name. A rose does not have ears. Unlike the rose, we are affected by sounds. But what is said to us by what stirs around in our subconscious? The name given to you by your parents can be one of the most significant factors determining your life and character. And uh, it basically programs you. It literally programs your destiny. What I'm intrigued by, um, as you all know, for many years, I owned a publishing company and until I sold it um, to an Asian company. And this company, fascinating, had writers. We had over 800 writers at one stage. Those writers all had names at the outset. And when they came to writing, they all changed their names. It was very rare for me to meet someone who actually kept his or her name. Most people who were writing felt this inexorable desire to change their name because they felt they had more freedom when they wrote. It allowed them to de-shackle themselves from the, the, the assumptions, the perceptions that everybody had about them. And uh, what I was intrigued by was how many times authors would go back after they'd written the book and actually changed their pen name, their author's name, back to their name, like none. None could do that. Many times I told authors, um, are you sure you want to keep the name? And they were like, yeah. And I was like, and if it was under your name, because I'd sometimes produce a cover with their actual name, they would say, don't do that. Just let's go back to the pen name. I, I definitely don't want my name on there. Um, and again, it was because of this burden that comes with having that name. Uh, I know that my life, I don't use my first name. And I don't know why. It's not because, you know, it's my dad's name, but I don't use it. Not because I don't love my dad. I love my dad with all my heart. But for whatever reason, I'm drawn to this other name that I have. Um, for quite a while, 
a lot of people don't know this about me, for quite a while I did two other things. I acted in other people's projects and I changed my name for that. Uh, when I was casting for a movie that I made many, many years ago back in South Africa in the late 80s, early 90s, I remember a very well-known uh, DJ coming to our casting studio and he changed his name. He changed his name to Shadow. I think it was Shadow, right? But it wasn't Shadow. It was uh, – he, he was – it wasn't Alex J. It wasn't uh, uh, a well-known presenter at the time. Uh, he was actually a well-known presenter, but it wasn't one of those. It was somebody else. I can't remember who it was. Maybe one of my sisters can tell me because uh, I remember – they were definitely in on the casting and they, re they re remembered that it was a radio presenter. But he called himself Night Shadow or, or Shadow Night or whatever it was. And that stuck with me. It was like, why did he change his name? The funniest thing was that about a year or two later, I went for a casting and I changed my name. And when I did that, something amazing happened. Like... I f it was this intrigue, this mystery that I set up as to who I was. First of all, no one knew exactly who I was, but I could hide under the fact that nobody actually knew who I was and I could actually do something else. I could be a bit more experimental with my acting, with my work, with my the things that I was doing. And that, that worked for me. That worked for me beautifully. Uh, when I came to Australia, I thought, well, what I'm going to do is I will have different names. I'll have a different name for when I go acting uh, so that that doesn't in any way impact my business world. And I'll have another name for when I do stand-up comedy. And uh, I actually chose – purposefully, I chose a girl's name as a first name for my stand-up comedy. And I haven't done much stand-up comedy, to be honest with you, but I did do – some stand-up comedy and I found that by having that name <laughs> it was fantastic especially when they were on stage for the first time and they would announce me and they you know everybody was expecting this woman and I kind of came up on stage now the truth be told it's a name that's quite acceptable as a male name but it's not a name you hear a lot it's a little bit like being called Renee right Renee is a girl's name but there are guys called Renee uh, but this name it was a um, uh, <laughs> don't know if I should say it, but it was, it's definitely a lady's name, but it's also a guy's name. I have heard men call that name, um, especially in places like Europe, you know, there's Europe, France, um, you know, Spain. I've heard that name many times as, as a male name as well. A little bit like Michelle it could be a lady's name, but Michelle is also a, ma a male, a male name. Um, just the freedom that it gives you to be called something else. And I'm strongly suggesting, and I really mean this, and I looked up each and every one of your names, brothers and sisters, and I figured out that your names all come with baggage. There's baggage in every name, my name included. All our names have some form of baggage. They all have some kind of a sound or a, a something that might be deflating your energy. It may actually be leading to your um, eating habits. It may be leading, alluding to your... It, it may actually be leading to all kinds of things that you weren't aware of. It could actually be leading to depression, believe it or not. Some names are low energy names. You know, those energy, that low energy can actually bring about low energy transactions in your life. And uh, there's a whole chunk, a whole section on the power of sound and how, um, you know, it says here, how does a rabbit move? Hop. What do you do at a Kmart? You shop. What do you do when you when a light turns green, right? And most people go stop, but that's not what happens, right? You move. Um, a spender likes to shop and shop. To wash a floor, you mop, mop, mop. A rabbit likes to hop, hop, hop and hop. When a light turns green, you? Yeah. You know, so th the sound can allude to an action, can allude to a something which may not be to your advantage. People are programmed by their names. And parents select names based on how it sounded or 
we named them after so-and-so, or at the time I felt something, or it just sounded right, or, you know, there was someone else in the ward at the time that had that name and we liked it. It doesn't mean it's your name, right? Uh, you would think that, you know, I always used to believe that a name was given to us because somehow we whispered it to our parents, somehow, that, uh, you know, but... How many times have I heard people say that they've never, ever had um, comfort with their names? You know, parents name things. You know, at the time, they may be fearful. Parents have hopes. They may name a child based on their hopes. They may have beliefs or they may even have been an emotional state. Um. You know, for some people, they have a certain association to a name. For instance, like telling a child to eat up. You know, for them, this is a good thing, right? But it might not be a good thing for a certain child's type of morphic body behavioral um, type, right? You might have a body that doesn't, shouldn't be eating up, right? Uh, sometimes a name can create a self-fulfilling prophecy which may not work. Or a name may create a state of rebelling. Um, You know, some names can can give people an association, a youngster an association that he's expected to rebel against something, right? Um, Or that he's expected to protest, Sometimes people name their kids on the basis of a compulsion to recreate childhood hurts. And language, as we know, is pretty messy. I mean, I know this from law school, that most of the language that we have is is bad. You know, it's a slippery language. English is not, not uh, clean and sharp and clear. And it's made up of lots and lots of things and... For the most part, it's spelling. A lot of it comes from witchcraftery. And I know many would argue that, but if you understand where the Anglo-Saxonic word structures came from and Druidism, I read a book on Druidism many years ago, and it tell you it's it's dark stuff, very dark stuff. You know, it was all very, um, all very satanic, you know. And... Um, so the other thing too is, you know, you may, you may be lumbered with someone's name that came before you from a past life, you know, from two, three, four generations ago that you may not even be aware that that person was involved in things that they shouldn't have been involved and consequently could pass on that same sort of negativity to you, right? Um, because your first name, middle name, perhaps, and even last name collectively could be creating a, a sound and an energy that is bringing about a certain kind of a reality. Um, in some situations, names in and of themselves are okay, but combined with the surname may not actually work, right? Um, you know, a name can be troublesome when it comes to an industry, you know. In Arnold Schwarzenegger's case, it wasn't. It was actually a good name to have. Uh, But for many, many years, they told him to change that name, to not go with that name. Uh, You read his book, and um, Arnold Schwarzenegger's book, and you realize, um, Total Recall, and you you realize what an incredible uh, act of faith it was to go out into the marketing world with that name. And um, so, yeah, I could go on and on and on about how names impact us and and how some names should never be given to a child, ever. You know, they're not even names that should be given to a child. Biblically, when we see names, we, we realize that those names came from an area, you know, a well. They came from a time of mourning. They came from a time of jubilance. They came from the fact that there are names made up of 
you know, the two or three persons that came before that person. You know, sometimes God changes the name of a person biblically from Jacob to Israel, from Abram to Abraham, right? God changes the name Sarai to Sarah. God makes lots and lots of name modifications. And, uh, and in preparation for your mission, for your life's mission, your name will be changed. I'm saying to you, if you're trying to enter into another state, a new destiny, you want to move into a new direction, you really, really ought to perhaps look at modifying your name. Um, this isn't something that's known only in the entertainment industry. It's known even uh, in the realm of our enemy. You know, uh, a lot of people change their names. You look at major artists that go on to produce films or albums or whatever it is worldwide and, and find, uh, you know, a claim everywhere. They've changed their names. Their names are not the names that we thought they should be, you know, or that they, we thought they were. They've got a, a new name. Um, it just sort of makes sense in a world, in the world, to perhaps move into a name that makes for a more powerful encounter uh, with 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 Christ, and I think the Holy Spirit is happy to give you that new name. You just have to, in prayer, uh, ask for that name, and you will see that that name has probably either already been shown to you many many times in your life, or that name is still coming. You have seen it many times, but you just didn't adopt the name. You didn't take the name as your as your name. But you're allowed to. Now, obviously, from a, a legal perspective, you have to ask yourself the question, you know, uh, me calling myself that name, is that legal? Well, <laughs> this is a huge question and definitely the subject of a whole nother recording. But I'm going to give you a couple of pointers just to help you through this. Because first of all, from a legal perspective, yes, if you are, you know, taking on any form of um, contracts, you want to, you're trying to do something that has to be legally bound, that has to uh, show legal binding, you need to, uh, you know, have a deed poll, you need to have that name written up properly, so that it is now recognized as the name or a name that you can now use to transact with. However, however, I've never done that. I, I don't think you need to do that. To be honest with you, you don't really need to do that because if you are transacting, I transact through companies and through trusts. I transact through discretionary or unit trusts. I, just, I transact through other entities. I never transact personally. So there's no requirement whatsoever on my part to use my personal name or any other alias of any kind. I, I never need to use it. never comes up. However, if that is your name and, you know, you've got this new name now, um, I still don't think you need to do any form of registration or anything. And the reason for that is because, you know, when you are doing the thing that you do, you will probably find that you will have people around you that can sign for things or can do things on your behalf. And you don't really need to do that. A lot of the people, the artists, the people that I represent uh, as a kind of a Jerry Maguire uh, in, on a very loose and small scale, I tend to find I do all of the transactional signings on their behalf. They don't really do any of that. We have an agreement. You know, they, they have an agreement with, with me personally. But for the most part, we transact completely. Uh, for and on their behalf. And that's really um, the extent of it. However, uh, of course, if you don't have a massive organization around you and you've just started off, then, you know, it is probably important to have a friend or somebody very close to you that can act as your business manager or your agent. But, um, yeah, just from a, a God perspective, I really think that it's important in life that we associate with the name that best fits our who we are and our destiny. And uh, I've got writers and musicians and creatives on my 
teams that are they have many names they have two three four different names sometimes you know some are kind of okay to have one name only but there's two or three people that i know of that have actually got different names for very specifically different things that they're doing you know one has got a name for uh, a type of uh, film that we produce um, she works with me, has a very specific name she uses for a type, a genre of film. And then she uses a different name for another genre because for her, for whatever reason, um, she feels that even that name has got associations to her other thing that she does with us. And I understand that. So, yeah, I'm, I'm very intrigued. I, um, there are lots of people out in the world that have been involved in various things. In fact, who was it? There was somebody that I was watching on YouTube uh, and I was intrigued when I found out that they actually had another channel and it was also them, and but they had a different name. And I was like, ah, they've actually got three brands. They don't have two brands. I wish I could remember it just like that off the, off, um, off the top of my head. But that was really intriguing because I didn't expect to come across that other channel where they were very involved in, but they just used a completely different name again. And I thought that is actually kind of cool because, you know, again, it's such a different profile of a channel that they did not want to um, contaminate that channel with another channel identity. Uh, what do I mean by contaminate? Well, we live in a very interesting world where from a marketing perspective, if you've ever read the L. Reese Jack Trout book, The 22 Immutable Laws of Marketing, there is very much this thing in the world where people just cannot see you doing this other thing as well or this other thing. They just can't see you doing it. You know, As far as they're concerned, once you've got a name and you're doing that thing, they come to know you as that and that's it. You know, it's, it's, Woe to the man or woman who tries to do this other thing with that same name. It just kind of doesn't work. It's very difficult. It's a little bit like Julio Iglesias uh, who used to be a baseball player. He used to be an athlete. Um, you know, uh, suddenly becoming a singer, which he did. And he was able to have his name, uh, carry his name into that new profession. It, it became very difficult for people to accept that. Um, but he succeeded because, but, you know, try and say, you know, Julio Iglesias has now gone to buy, to open up a coffee shop or a series of coffee shops. You know, it's it becomes a bit more complicated now, right? So I... I definitely could have given you that example. I just can't remember who it was exactly, but that was very intriguing because it is somebody you know. And they did that. You know, I remember Will Smith, he went from filmmaking to being a singer, having an album, uh, Men in Black. Uh, he had songs. He wasn't a, I mean, you know, great musician, but didn't really transcend as a music artist. And, and then... And, and it's not Will Smith, it's someone else. But And then Will Smith went on to do something else. He got involved with Planet Hollywood, uh, fast food with Sylvester Stallone and Schwarzenegger and a few others. And But it's still not him, it's somebody else. But they did it very, very cleverly. When I saw that, I went, wow, that is definitely smart. Because, you know, you know him as something, but then he changed his name to something else to to be in that other industry also in entertainment, but he changed his name and that worked. But then he, he changed his name again because of this other thing that he did, which I thought was really clever. When I saw that third channel, I just went, that's very clever because I would never, ever have associated him with that. And, you know, he's had, I don't know, two, three hundred videos on there. And I hadn't imagined that he was actually behind it. And I'd been watching you know, 60 plus videos already, I didn't realize that he was actually behind that particular, um, that particular channel. So when it comes to me, I'll probably let you know, but it was, it was just very intriguing. I thought you'd enjoy this little, this little recording.